I'm actually going to preach on something very serious this morning. It's joy. Okay? <laughs> serious business. God takes joy very seriously. And he takes your joy very seriously. And with Essie, I know the joy of the Lord is really something that sustained her. She walked through this very unexpected passing of her husband. And her attitude through the whole thing, you know, and, and the same thing with Melissa, not that, you know, not that they haven't been sad or they haven't, you know, had like moments of grief and, you know, went through a grieving process, but at the same time, the joy of the Lord really was their strength. And it, it's, it's true that no matter what circumstances we're going through in life, you can choose to let your circumstances dictate how you feel if you're going to be happy, if you're going to have joy, or you can let Christ dictate how you feel. And happiness is, ultimately, is a choice. Happiness is a choice. For us, as Christians, happiness is a choice. As, for a non-Christian, you can, choose to have a, you can choose to have an upbeat attitude, or you can choose to, you know, have a, you know, to choose to be happy. Anybody can choose to be happy. But for us, it's like, for, we almost have to ignore the fact that we're Christians to not be happy. We, have to, we really have to ignore the gospel to not be happy. And whenever I'm feeling like, oh man, this is, this is not going the way I thought it was going to go. If I take a moment, I'm going to start singing a song, take a moment to remember <laughs> who God is and who I am. <laughs> and there he goes, lifting my load again. It's amazing. Where's Tim? Come on, Tim, get back up here. No, but it's, it's true. Like when you just take that moment to be like, oh, whose, prob- you know, whose problem is this? You know, and, it, and, and sometimes it's really your problem. Like, wow, I have a really big problem here. Wow. And even when I do screw up, which I do screw up, and we all screw up because we're humans, and I'm not, I'm not prophesying screw up over you. I'm just, saying, <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth. You know, if you, if you know me for any length of time, at some point, I am going to let you down. I will disappoint you. I will fall short of your expectations. I'll probably fall short of my expectations. You know, and, but no matter what, I have the grace of God. I get to turn, you know what? Every day I get to wake up in the morning and his mercies are fresh for me. I get to wake up in the morning and say, well, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And when we, as Christians, we have... We just don't have the ability and we don't have the opportunity, but I feel like we have the responsibility. As Christians, we have the responsibility to be the happiest people in the room. We need to have like this outrageous optimism. We need to have the outrageous happiness. Because when, well, for one thing, it, it makes our message a little bit more believable. I've got some really good news. This is really exciting. You can have Jesus in your heart. You can be just like me. I have the joy of the Lord. Doesn't mean I'm going to smile or be happy. Because there's a difference between joy and happiness. There is a difference between joy and happiness. But if you have the joy of the Lord, you will be happy. You will be happy. I'm not saying you're going to be overflowing with joy outwardly at all times because there are periods of time where we go through and we're like, oh. But you know what? When we turn our attention back to the Lord, man, the joy of the Lord is your strength. You're going to be happy. Proverbs, I think it's 15, 13 says, Proverbs 15 says, um, a happy heart is going to show up on your face. One of the characteristics of a happy person is they smile. So, if you have the joy of the Lord in your heart, you need to be advertising it on your face. And, and, and sometimes, and I, and I was one of these people, where I took myself really serious. I took my responsibilities really seriously, and I was super serious. And I, 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 was, I had a lot of people working for me, and I'm really stern, and I'm really serious, and got to get things done, and... You know what I ran into? I ran into an issue that people thought I was mad at them all the time. Even though I wasn't, I was really happy. Don't I look happy? And somebody said, you know, Roger, I think, you're, I think the employees respond better to you if you smile once in a while. Really? Why? <laughs> because they need to know you're happy. You, you know, they, they feel like you're really mad at them all the time. Well, I'm happy. 
my face was, ha- was challenged with this. Well, and, and in reality, when I look back, I really wasn't like super happy. I thought I was happy, but I wasn't. Because when you, when you were happy, it is going to show up on your face. You are going to smile. You are going to laugh. You are going to be fun to be around. The people, you know, happiness is an amazing op- opportunity to advertise the gospel. Happy, you know, that song we were just listening to, uh, I'm happy. You know, you can, tr- you can try to bring me down, but don't bother. Like, that's really, we get to choose what we're going to do. Are we going to let our circumstances dictate our joy, or are we going to let Christ dictate our joy? When we allow our circumstances to dictate our joy, we are actually not honoring Christ. We are not honoring him. We, we bring honor to God by smiling. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is a funny message, but you know, I'm like, God, you sure you don't want me to talk about raising people from the dead? That seems so much more pertinent. How about like signs and wonders and miracles? Don't, you know, couldn't we focus on that? And I really feel like you're just saying, I just want you guys to be happy. Oh, happy, okay. Happiness is really important. You know, you can, and I've met people. I've met people who've operated in the gifts of the Spirit. Like, wow. And they were not fun to be around. They were just kind of not, they were really serious, and you got close to them, and I remember shaking one of their hands, I'm like, hey, man, nice to meet you. And he's like, thank you. <laughs> like, wow, that's awesome. That was kind of like shaking a fish hand. It was not a lot of interaction there, but this man operates in the gifts of the Spirit like crazy. And there's a lot of people out there that operate in the gifts of the Spirit. But you know what? The gifts of the Spirit are gifts. You don't, you just get them. When you get born again, you get Spirit-filled, you get to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. But operating in the gifts of the Spirit is not a sign of, uh, I remember listening to this message. Somebody's preaching a message similar to this, and I was really confused by it, so I'm going to try to be clear. Operating in the gifts of the Spirit is not a, necessarily a sign of spiritual maturity. Operating in the gift, and I'm talking about healing, speaking in tongues, the charismatic gifts that we're, you know, I'm, I'm particularly referring to those. I love them. They're awesome. I think we should all operate them as part of, you know, God wants a church full of happy people. He wants happy, healthy kids, happy, healthy kids that are operating in the gifts of the Spirit, but are also bearing the fruit of the Spirit. You know, the difference between a gift and a fruit is that a fruit grows, okay? Fruit, you plant, and it grows, Okay, you, can have a, you can have the gifts of the Spirit operating in your life, but, but the fruit of the Spirit, you know, you're talking about the, the first three fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, that's a fruit of the Spirit. That's been planted in you. It's been planted in the garden of your soul. You know, we talk about, I, I talk about the body, as a human, as a, as a person, as a believer, or as a human being, you, you are comprised of three parts. This is how I, this is how I teach it, because it's simple and it's easy, and I like simple, easy things. You have a spirit, you have a soul, which is your mind, your emotions, and then you have a physical body, all right? Now, when you get born again in your spirit, you are born again. You are, you are perfect. You are holy. You are in union with Christ. And in your body, you're the same, usually. I mean, you, sometimes you get healed. You, you know, you, hopefully, your countenance changes. You, get, you have the joy of the Lord. You have the joy of your salvation. But if you, if you weighed 250 pounds before you got born again, chances are you still weighed 250 pounds. If you were bald before you got born again, you're probably still bald unless, you know, I mean, if you had red hair before you got born again, it's not going to change unless you change it yourself. You know, you're born again in your spirit. It's completely changed. But your body is on this outside. And your body can change. You can be healed. You can, you can have things happen to your body. But in your soul, your soul realm, your mind, your emotions... That's where we have to, you know, that's why the Bible, Romans says, by the renewing of your mind, we have to renew our minds to what happened in our born-again spirits. And when we are not walking in love and peace and joy, we're not walking strong. We're not, and I can, I can come up here and I can go rah, 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 and I can get out the pom-poms and you guys can get all excited and we can do a little pyramid. It'll be great. It would be great, actually. I'd really like that. Um, but... If you walk out of here, and tomorrow morning you wake up and you're like, ah, I got the Mondays again. I got another case of the Mondays. Ah, I got to go to work. Uh, I got to witness to my coworkers again. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do the old standard. I'm going to pull my Bible out, and I'm going to set it on my desk. 
because I'm going to witness to him about the Lord while I read my Bible and eat my lunch. Oh, and they might get a little offended. <laughs> All right, there's no joy in that. There's, there's like zero joy. When you wake up tomorrow morning and Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning and Thursday morning and Friday morning and Saturday morning, you should have the joy of the Lord. You should have love, peace, joy. You should feel some kind of, you know, when you have love and peace and joy, there's something called happiness that happens. Okay, happiness. You should be happy. I can't make you happy. In fact, you can choose to be happy, but you can't even make you happy. And if you're not happy, it's because you've been trying to make yourself happy. The only one that can really make you happy is Jesus. And if you're born again, he's already made you completely and fully happy in your spirit. Now you just need to renew your mind to the reality of the happiness you carry inside of you. To the level that you're going to renew your mind, like we call it, I call it the soul garden, your soul garden. What are you planting in your soul garden? Are you planting seeds of truth, the word of God? Let the Holy Spirit fertilize it, bring it, to, bring it to life in your spirit so that the roots can go down deep into the truth that you already carry? Or are you filling your mind with, oh no, I got that payment coming up, how am I going to make that? Uh, I think I just chipped a tooth. Oh, man. Oh, I got that high school reunion coming up, and I need to lose, you know, five pounds. And uh, I think I just ripped my pants. Shoot. This is awful. This is really bad. Uh, you know, and those are all things that I've, <laughs> I've wasted my time worrying about. Um, not all at the same time, I don't think, but Maybe. But if I'm focusing on those things, I'm magnifying those things. I'm magnifying those things. But if I turn my attention to the Lord, if I turn my attention to Him, I start to magnify Him. If I'm, if I'm trying to get myself happy by my circumstances, well, I'll be happy when I get to this. I'll be happy when I have this much money. I'll be happy when, I, when I'm in this kind of shape. I'll be happy when I can when my kids do this for me, or I'll be happy when my spouse treats me this way, or I'll be happy when, you know, we have better chairs at church. I don't know. But if I'm basing my happiness on something like that, it's just like when Paul was at, hang on, I got a scripture for you guys. You're going to like this one. I felt really clever when I, when I thought of this. You know, in, in Galatians, when Paul said, if you are depending on circumcision, the uh, gospel has become, a, you know, Christ has become of no effect to you. Was that Galatians 5 or 2? Hang on, Galatians 2. Um, he said, if you're depending on circumcision, the grace of Christ or Christ has become of no effect to you. You've removed yourself from grace. And he's talking about circumcision in the law. I'm going to tell you the truth. If you are depending on circumstances, Christ has become of no effect to you. You take out the word circumcision and put in the word circumstances. I think they're the same letters, okay? If you're depending on circumstances to bring you happiness, then the gospel is of no effect to you. Christ has become no effect to you. He can't help you because you're going to be praying. You're going to be like, oh, Lord, change my circumstances, and then I can be happy. Or you're going to be thinking, I need to change my circumstances, and I can be happy. God wants you today to position your hearts to be happy. He wants you to position your hearts to be happy right now. He says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. If we go to um, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, this is an awesome scripture. Then he said to them, go, eat of the fat, drink of the sweet, and send portions to him who has nothing prepared. For this day is a holy day to our God. Do not be grieved, for the, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. If you're feeling down... If you're feeling beat down, if you're feeling downtrodden, what I need you to do is I need you to get strong. Get strong. You can't win a fight that you don't stay in. If you drop out of the fight, you lost. We're supposed to run this race well. We're supposed to run it strong. I need you to finish strong. God wants you to finish strong. And guess what? How do you finish strong? You get happy. That's it. You get happy. Not stupid happy, but reality happy. You're like, Jesus is reality. You're born again reality inside of you. What Jesus has done in your life is amazing. He's amazing. All right. 
Hebrews 12, 2, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of, our, of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus did it for the joy set before him. Did what? He took the cross for you for the joy set before him. Man, when I think about that, I literally get really happy. Like, I get happy. There might be things in, you know, that doesn't mean I'm getting happy with everything, but I am happy, like really happy. I am really aggressively optimistic. Sometimes I'm a little too optimistic <laughs> for reality. I'm going to share you guys a story. Like a few years ago, Melissa wanted to do a, a sprint triathlon, which I thought was great. Great. You want to do a sprint triathlon? Go, honey. Good job. I encourage you. Well, part of, that, part of that actually involved a lot of training, which I didn't really, well, she's like, hey, will you run with me? Will you bike with me? Will you, uh, uh, yeah, sure. You know, whatever I can do, honey, when, I'm, when it fits into my really busy schedule, I'll, I'll be sure to, yeah. Now, but I tell you what, if you do a sprint, if you do this triathlon, I'll do a duathlon with you, because I'm not a real strong swimmer, so I'll do a duathlon with you. And I figured that was my part to encourage her. Well, lo and behold, she actually does this sprint triathlon. It's in July. It's at the end of July. And this is a several years ago. And <laughs> I'm, as, as she's finishing the triathlon, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, that's right. I did say that, didn't I? Well, this didn't look like it was very much fun for her. So she's probably either not going to want to do it or she's going to say, we'll do it next year. And the next year will come and go and we can forget about it. She's like, and I'm like meeting her at the finish line. I'm like, way to go. She's like, duathlon's coming up. Be ready. Three months. What? Oh. I'm like, oh, no, this is, oh, I can't, wow. So all of a sudden, I'm doing this duathlon in three months. I think duathlon, that should be pretty easy. Well, she picks this one out. It's got this, it's got a 5K run. It's got a 30-mile bike ride, and then a one-mile one run at the end. Oh, man, okay, I've never ridden my bike farther than 15 miles, but huh, I'm in pretty good shape. Shouldn't be that bad. So I start to train, I know, <laughs> this is delusional. So I start to train, and I get going, I get training, I, get, I, I only have time to get up to 20 miles the week before I finally get up to 20 miles, and I'm thinking, hey, this isn't that bad, 20 miles, if I can bike 20, I can bike 30. What's the difference, right? So aggressively optimistic, you know, and day of the race comes, and I run the 5K, and surprisingly, I think, <laughs> I think at the, up to that point I had run like that distance maybe like three times, but surprisingly, it's not bad, hmm, it's pretty good. Get on my bike and I'm pedaling. I'm like, yeah, this isn't bad. I'm passing everybody. I'm passing the little ladies. You know, and it's a duathlon, so it, it, everybody that can't swim is going to do this. Okay, <laughs> so it doesn't matter what shape you're in, what you look like. And, and these events are really cool. I encourage you guys to just do one. They're super fun, like the 5Ks and stuff. It's a great way to to get in shape, and you get to see all kinds of really cool people, like from like little kids to like really old people. Anyway, so I'm passing these little kids, and I'm passing these really old people, and I'm feeling really good about myself, and. I'm riding on like a more of a mountain bike, it's like big fat tires, and I'm just pedaling along, and I'm feeling strong, and, and I start passing the people that were like on road bikes. I'm like, hmm, I'm doing really good, yeah. And then mile 20 comes, and I'm feeling strong, like 20, 30, what's the difference? And I get up to like mile 25, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh man, this is not, this is not feeling good. The last five miles, I'm just chugging along, and the guys on the road bikes are passing me by, and some of the younger people are passing me by, and I'm like, ah. Oh. Man, this is, this is rough. All I got to do is get to mile 30, and I get to get off my bike and run. Only problem was it wasn't actually a 30-mile bike ride. It was like a 34-mile bike ride. So I get to mile 30. I get to the mile 30 marker, and I'm like, yeah! Where the heck am I? I'm out in the middle of nowhere. There's nobody here. Where do I put my bike? And then people just keep going by me. And I realize, oh, man, I'm actually, um, I'm, I actually have to go, uh, further than this. This is kind of a, not a super happy situation right now. Uh, what do I do? So I just start pedaling, and pretty soon the little kids start to pass me, and the grannies start to pass me, and I'm just chugging along. I got off my bike. By the time I finished, I got off my bike, and I'm like, okay, all I got to do is finish the mile. All I got to do is finish the mile, and uh, get off my bike, and I can't even feel my legs. <laughs> just, my legs are like, I can't feel my legs. Like, I'm like, completely numb from the waist down. And I'm like, well, hey, you know what? I'm just going to run really fast. <laughs> it's like, it was like you saw this guy, you ever see the videos of the guys crossing the finish line at the triathlon where they're like, oh, 
like this. This is me. I'm like, oh. you know, and I got like literally, I'm not making this up. I have like 10-year-old kids running by me like this. And I got 80-year-old ladies going, you'll be okay, son. You'll be okay. So I'm thinking, I got to walk. So I'm walking. And I'm, my, legs, <laughs> my upper body fell, you know, I could pump my arms. So I'm like pumping my arms. My legs are just kind of coming along. And uh, man, I, I crossed the race. I finished it. And honestly, I, the reason why I finished it, I believe, was because I was super aggressively optimistic, and I just kept, like, it was my aggressive optimism that pushed me through. But my, the strength, was, my strength was completely gone in my legs. My, I could have crawled on my, I could have pulled myself along with my arms. My arms felt great, but it didn't matter because I wasn't going to do that. I, but like, I, honestly, to swear to God, I would have done that if I would have, I would have, I would have pulled myself across that finish line with my arms. I would have. It wouldn't have mattered. I was going to finish no matter what. My point in telling you guys that story is that we have strength. We have strength. And sometimes when we enter into something, we enter into a race, it turns out to be a little bit further than we anticipated. And sometimes we've done our research and we think, okay, and, and honestly, I went out on the web last night and I Googled that event that I was in because I wanted to make sure I didn't screw up the mileage. The reason why I thought it was 30 miles is because that's what they had posted on their website. 30 mile bike ride. <laughs> I think about it now and I'm like, Ugh. that's why I thought it was 30 miles. Because you told me it was 30 miles. Well, you know what? They were wrong. They didn't even get their own stuff right. It was like 34. But actually, it wasn't their website. It was a third party website and it could have gotten mixed up in translation. Anyway, so that's what I was basing my thing on. I, I was underprepared. I, I read the wrong, wrong information. And that's how it is sometimes in life. We're not prepared, we've got misinformation. People, you know, people are trying to communicate the right thing to us. We get confused. There's, there's something going on. And we got to make a choice. We got to make a choice. Are we going to push through? Are, are we going to get weary of doing good? Like Paul warns us, don't get weary of go- doing, don't get weary of doing good because you're going to reap a harvest. Or are we going to choose to be like, you know what? I don't have the strength to continue. I don't have the strength to continue. I, I'm going to give up. We have a choice. That's when we get to choose. What, who is greater, Christ in us or our circumstances? Are we going to choose our circumstances or are we going to choose Christ in us? And when we focus, when we get to choose Christ in us, we can choose joy. We can choose happiness because it's from him. When we put ourselves, when we focus ourselves on Christ, we put ourselves back under his grace And we're not depending on circumcision or circumstances. We're depending on him. We put ourselves back under his grace. It's amazing what happens to our issues. It's amazing what happens to our problems. They start to get smaller. And then the other thing, when we start to focus on him and we start to thank him and be grateful to him and have gratitude for what he's done with us and, and for us and through us, then all of a sudden, things start to change. And then when we get to move to this place of, like, joy and laughter, like real laughter, like laughing, and not taking everything so seriously, not taking, our, not taking especially ourselves, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Melissa and I, we've, sometimes we're just so serious, and it's like, oh, my gosh. Especially with the kids, I'm, you guys, you know. <laughs> and, and, man, Kids don't take themselves that seriously, and they laugh a lot, and then they learn how to be, like, super serious from us, and then we're just like, hey, you guys are laughing too much. Stop laughing. No. God wants us to be happy. He wants us to be happy. He wants us to be in this place of joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. You know, in Proverbs, it tells us that laughter, a joy-filled heart, is actually good medicine, and that's the truth. Like, if you have joy in your heart, it actually... Science is backing this one up. Of course, we know the Word of God doesn't, but now science is catching up. It's like, wow, people that are happy actually live longer? People that are happy actually have better lives? What? Happiness makes you happy? (laughs) Whoa! You know, there's a, I don't know if you guys know this comedian, George Burns. Um, He lived to be like 100 or something like that. I don't, I don't know if he was born again or not. I don't know. I, I, I just remember about George is that he smoked a cigar all the time. But he was funny. He was really funny. He laughed a lot. And I don't know how, what his lifestyle is. I just know he's always smoking a cigar, for real. He wasn't like pretend smoking. He had a big old stogie. He lived to be like 100 or 102 or something like that. Funny, funny guy. 
And he wasn't a guy that actually just told jokes to make other people laugh. He actually thought he was really funny too. So he really enjoyed himself. And he lived to be 100 years old. What I find is when people learn to loosen up, when they learn to laugh, when they learn to like operate in the joy of the Lord, one, they're operating under grace. It's, if you're operating in grace, if you're receiving grace, it's hard not to be happy. I mean, it really is. Like when you're receiving grace, when you put yourself under grace, and you're not depending on the law, and you're not depending on your circumstances, you're not depending on outside, you're not depending on your outside behavior or your outside environment to bring happiness to you, man, it's hard not to be happy. All right, I'm going to close with Romans 15, verse 13. This is a verse for us today. This is a verse for this church. This is a verse for all, all people that I really feel like God is just speaking this to us today. Romans 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him <laughs> so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? This is what God's will is for you. As you trust in him, he's going to overflow you with joy and peace. Overflow you by the power of the Holy Spirit. But it's conditional upon you trusting in him. You have to trust in him. It comes down to trusting in him and not yourself. If you're not overflowing, look at who you're trusting in or what you're trusting in. If you're depending not upon his grace, but on something outside of that, turn your attention back to Jesus. Focus on him. Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. If you have joy, if you have happiness, if you have peace, you are going to overflow with hope overflow with hope to those around you. Overflow with hope to your family members. You need to be happy on the inside before you can be happy on the outside. Now, at your core, in your spirit, you are really happy because you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. You are seated with Christ in heavenly places. But around your spirit, there's this thing called your mind, your emotions, your soul. And sometimes it's like a big insulator. <laughs> you need to get happy there. And the way you're going to get happy there is by trusting God, by believing his word, by, by moving in the spirit, by living in the spirit. If you are thinking in the flesh and not in the spirit, you're always going to be worried. You're always going to be, oh man, this is so awful and what do I do? No, let your spirit man rule. Be ruled by your spirit. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Be filled with the joy of the Lord. Be filled with the peace of the Lord. As you plant the seed of the word in your heart, it's going to grow in the garden of your soul. And when you, if you start out in a place like I did where I had to teach my face how to smile because it wasn't something I did a whole lot of, in, especially at work. Oh my gosh, couldn't smile at work. People might think I was happy. It's a good place to smile. You'll be surprised what happens. Now, if you're in that place, that's good. That, that's where you're at. Smile. Laugh. On purpose, smile on purpose. But as you plant the seed of the word, as the spirit grows in you, as the Holy Spirit begins to move through your life, there's something called fruit. It's going to grow. Fruit grows without effort once it's planted and fertilized. You plant the word in your mind, you plant your mind becomes renewed, and then pretty soon people are coming up to you and they're saying, you are the most optimistic person I know. And you're thinking, What? Really? Me? And it's not going to be because of your self-effort. It's going to be because you've received the grace of God in your life. You're going to be, the, you're going to be one of the happiest people. That, you're going to be the person that people want to be around because you're happy. You, you have joy. You have peace. You have love. You are growing the fruit of the Spirit. And that's what God's will is. He wants a church full of happy, healthy people who are operating in the gifts of the Spirit, who are growing the fruit of the Spirit, not out of their own self-effort, not from their own self-will, but because they operate under grace, because they receive the grace of God, because Christ is the center of their universe, because they're centered on the gospel, because they're centered on the atonement, because they understand that Jesus has already done it, it has already been fulfilled, and they know, man, they've got good news. 
they got good news, and it shows up on their face. It shows up on their face. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for making it easy. I thank you for making it simple. I thank you for making it by your grace, by your love, by your mercy, Lord. I thank you for stirring our hearts to happiness. I thank you for giving us the reason to be aggressively optimistic, the reason to smile, the reason to be happy, the reason to be full of your joy and your love and your peace and your mercy, Lord. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I'm just going to declare, declare this verse over you. Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and all peace because you trust in him. Because you trust in him. Because you trust in him. So that you, 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 you are all, you are all going to overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, I just ask you to just fill us up. I want you to open your hearts, open your minds, trust in the Lord this morning, trust in the Lord today, trust in him tomorrow, trust in him this week. Let him fill you to overflowing. Let your capacity to carry his spirit, his, his love increase in your life so you can overflow with hope, so you can overflow with joy and happiness. In Jesus' name, amen.